If you have pain or tightness in your mid or upper back, right between the shoulder blades, I'm gonna show you a quick exercise you can do that will relieve this pain and tightness pretty much instantly. Uh, there's a few different ways to do it, so I'm gonna show you um, some ways you can do it in your home or in the, on, uh, like in a gym, and then I'll show you a way you can do, actually do it in public, and so you can do this anywhere, and it doesn't even look that weird, so uh, it's really helpful if you're you know, on a long car ride or just having a long day, you can just do this anywhere. So uh, first we'll do the floor exercises, and this is just gonna help release uh, your, your mid-back, and it can actually instantly relieve pain and, and stiffness that you're having. So uh, one of my favorite ways to do it is on the Swiss ball or the exercise ball, and you're just gonna be on your knees like this, you're gonna get your hands kind of like in this prayer position and you're gonna just roll out onto the ball and you're gonna drop your mid back right between the shoulder blades here. You're gonna drop it as low as you can. But the trick is, and the most important thing is, you need to protect your lower back while you're doing that by engaging your abdominal muscles. So my abdominals are tight and even my glutes can help a little bit to keep my pelvis in a kind of a posterior pelvic tilt. And so the extension, the backward bending is going into my mid back, dropping that space right between the shoulder blades towards the ground and not going into my lower back. So I'm protecting my lower back and I'm just gonna roll out, protecting the lower back, tight abdominals, and then just dropping down my mid back. And this really feels good. It really opens up my thoracic spine. And you can just breathe. And drop a little lower. And you can do as many rounds of that as you want. As many breaths as you want. And so that's one way. Another way is if you have a foam roll. You can do the same exact thing. It's just a little lower, so it can actually be a little bit more intense. You can drop a little deeper into it. And if you if you know your anatomy, the exact anatomy that you want to, the exact area of the spine that you kind of want to focus on dropping is T4, right between the shoulder blades, trying to drop it down to the ground, but again, not extending through the lower back. And then the last way in the gym or in your home is just right on the floor. And I still keep my hands in the prayer position because it's healthier for the shoulder if you get any pinching or pain in your shoulder. Uh, just opening your, your posture like that kind of helps with that. So I just stay in the prayer position, drop down. I like using the foam roller or the ball better because it just allows to get into the stretch a little deeper. Okay, and then the way that we can do it in public is pretty cool. So you're in standing. And uh, so say you're just waiting in line somewhere or you just got out of your car, you're at a gas station, you're gonna need to find something that's, I don't know, you, I, I would call this around mid waist or chest high. Um, it can be lower, it can be like, you know, anywhere from here to here. And you're just gonna wanna be able to put your hands on it and then you're gonna kind of step back a little bit, and then you're just gonna drop down. So, same thing, but in standing. I'm protecting my lower back. That's one of the most important things. Breathing and just dropping my thoracic spine, my mid back, right between the shoulder blades, dropping it towards the ground. And I don't release my abdominals. I don't lose that tension at all. And then if you want to reinforce this stretch, this release that you did. You can go straight up into a, a functional movement, like a push-up. And so I love to kind of do reps of this where I come down, come back up, do a push-up. And the functional movement part of this is really important for having a longer lasting effect. So you train your body they say you gain the range and then you train the range and range is referring to range of motion. And so it's really important to just train your neurological system, your nervous system to be able to uh, function with this new way that you uh, are using your body. So 
Uh, hopefully that helps. And I just did want to address one question that was asked on a previous video. Somebody asked, what is the difference between the core balance training program and these YouTube videos that I create? So actually these YouTube videos are more like exercise tips and tricks to offer you relief. And the core balance training program is quite different than that. It's, it's, goal is to address the root cause of chronic lower back pain and these exercises that we do in the youtube videos don't actually get to the root cause they they more just offer relief and in order to address the root cause you have to change your relationship with your body you have to learn a new healthier way of moving that involves your core and so that's what the program does it actually teaches you how to engage your core how to connect to your core and apply that to all the movements of your daily life. So whether you are doing the dishes or yard work or whatever, you are doing it in a way that is healthy for your body. And this relationship with your body that protects your spine is what we teach in the core balance training program. It's a very systematic process. And so it's not really just a bunch of exercise videos that teaches you like a routine that you do for the rest of your life. It teaches you how to integrate healthy movement into your life so you don't have to rely on the exercises to stay out of pain because the way that you move through life keeps you out of pain. And that way you can do the things that you love to do. Um, and those things, like for me, it's surfing. Those are the things that keep my body healthy because I'm doing them in a healthy way. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm assuming other people have that same question if one person has a question. Usually many more, more people do. So um, thank you for watching and I uh, hope to see you in the next one. All right. Welcome to the live Q&A portion of the stream as I get settled at my desk here. Uh, and uh, feel free to uh, support the channel if you find any of this valuable uh, by hitting that like button or even sharing with your friends. Um, you know, copy the, copy the link and text it over to your friends if you think this can help them. So uh, as usual, I answer questions from students in the Core Balance Training Program every week. And so we have a few questions prepared. And... Um, and you can communicate with me in the chat if you're here live. Uh, thank you for being here. And we do uh, also have a tradition of uh, rewarding a student each week with um, the Student Hub Student of the Week, which is our, the Student Hub is our community for students to interact and, and ask questions. So this week we have two Student Hub Students of the Week, uh, Ben and Ed. So congratulations, guys. Both of you uh, had some inspiring stories that you shared in the hub. And um, Ben, I believe it was a story about hanging lights in your house. And normally this would probably hurt your back. And you mentioned that you were able to hang the lights. And uh, not only were you able to do it without hurting your back, but you actually felt good, maybe even better afterwards. And that is huge. That's the whole purpose of this program. As I mentioned in uh, you know, the video before, this is about being able to do the things in your life that you would normally do and have those things be healthy for your body, not damaging to your spine. So uh, that's awesome, Ben. And just, uh, you know, we are proud of you and happy you shared so you can help inspire other students. And Ed, uh, very similar. He, uh, he had shared with us that he has been unable to drive or ride in a car for more than 10 minutes without his back being very painful uh, for quite some time. I can't remember the time frame. Uh, but that he was able to actually uh, drive to go meet his new grandbaby. And he rode in the car for over eight hours. And uh, he said he learned a lot about his body in this process. 
And so um, apparently that he was able to tolerate the car ride with and, and uh, says here minimal to no fallout. So just again, proud of you and thank you for sharing. That's very inspiring. And hopefully it gives hope to other students that, that you can do the same. So both of you uh, get an extra month added to your membership. You have to do nothing. We will add the month from the back end and hopefully that just gives you more time to spend in certain areas of the program that will, uh, you know, help you continue to make progress. So uh, I see something in the chat. Uh, Sperry Chiropractic, is this the move you presented here? Contraindicated in a loss of kyphosis with cervical curve reversal. Ah, that is a very specific question, Sperry. So, um, Let's see, loss of kyphosis with cervical curve reversal. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you would call it contraindicated, but it would probably be not something that somebody with this type of posture needs to do because they already have, uh, you know, they already have that kind of extension in their thoracic spine. So yeah, that's a good point. If, if you don't fall into the, you know, the most common pattern of posture, uh, then not all the things that you find in this program or on the internet are going to apply to you. You know, this is mostly addressing the 80% of the population that tend to have more of a kypho you know, hyperkyphotic curve in the spine, and, and there are always outliers. So that's a great point, Sperry. Thank you for bringing that up. And, uh, and uh, it's just a good reminder that no matter who you are, you need to listen to your body. You need to um, you need to see it from the perspective that every situation is unique and, and that uh, the best thing you can do is educate yourself and learn about your body to find out what is best for you. So uh, let's move on to the next section of the stream where we uh, answer some questions from students. So this is a question from Doug uh, posted in the student hub. He says, I just discovered that my glutes are quite weak, especially the right glute. So I've been flexing them for 10 to 30 seconds, as long as I can, for several minutes each morning. I do this while sitting and breathing into my spine and anchoring my back into the chair. It seems that it's going to help because I think the weakness in my glutes are the main problem causing my lower spine and SI joint pain. I also have quite a bit of pain and tightness in my right psoas muscle and outer thigh muscle. Okay. Right. So as an outer thigh, it all seems related. So that's, uh, you know, a very good point, Doug. I think that typically when a student or a patient has an intuition about something like for you, you say it all seems related. I believe that you're most often right about that. That intuition is right. And so I would agree with that. Um, do you feel this glute flexing is the right approach? Are there other approaches you can rec recommend to accelerate my relief in tightness? So um, the first thing I kind of want to mention is that the, the glute flexing that you're doing, Doug, may not actually be strengthening your glutes as much as it would be training the endurance, uh, the stamina of those muscles because you're doing it for a longer period of time, 10 to 30 seconds and holding that contraction. And that's a really good thing because oftentimes it's not necessarily strength that is the problem for supporting the spine throughout our day because that's what we want to do. We want the spine to be supported, supported not just for moments, brief moments or bursts in time, but we want the spine to be supported throughout the activities that we do. And that takes endurance. And if it were only a matter of strength, it would be typically, you know, we wouldn't see bodybuilders and CrossFit athletes with chronic back pain because they have in immense amounts of strength. But what they may need is, in addition to muscular balances, the endurance in those spinal support muscles. So I think it's a great thing uh, what you're doing. And so just I'm just address that because you mentioned you, you think your glutes are weak and they may be weak, but... Uh, what, what we really want for them to be able to do is to hold that contraction and build up some endurance for supporting your spine. So, yeah, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a bad thing what you're doing. I don't think, I think there's going to be a pretty low ceiling for this particular exercise. Uh, these are, you know, these are, these are called glute sets. 
and uh, we, we give these exercises to to people in maybe the hospital, people who are are bedridden a little bit because it's something you can do in bed and it offers some benefit but the ceiling is low because you can't really strengthen your glutes very much uh, with just squeezing them the glutes are an incredibly strong muscle and so in, in order to progress their strength uh, you'll want to have a more a, b- a bit of a higher intensity uh, exercise so you ask for other uh, approaches. So the fir- answer to your first question is, yeah, this is this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, uh, especially because of the, the, the fact that you're holding it and breathing. Now, the second part of your question, are there other approaches I could recommend? Uh, yeah, definitely. The, the main tool that we use in the program is the bridge. And that exercise is excellent for not only glute strengthening and glute endurance, but also, you know, improving your posture and creating muscular balance in the muscles around your pelvis that will help to keep that pelvis healthy and aligned. And um, the other thing is just all the progressions of the, of the bridge that we do in the program. And in particular, uh, you know, if you're looking for strength, the single leg bridge is phenomenal for, for strengthening your glutes. However, it's not ideal for SI joint pain. Uh, if you've seen, you know, some of the stuff I've put out on the SI joint, it really gets stressed when you do unilateral or asymmetrical exercises. And so the single leg bridge would qualify as both, you know, unilateral and asymmetrical. And so that, that's only going to be something you'll want to implement into your routine once you feel like your SI joint is kind of stabilized. Um, But it will address any left-right imbalances. You mentioned that you have your right psoas muscle uh, is a thing and your outer thigh muscle. So that's kind of a left-right imbalance. And and so this is a long game and you'll want to, you know, build the stability of your lumbo-pelvic hip complex, that whole area of your body first, front to back stability. And then once you feel like you've kind of stabilized that, you can address that left-to-right imbalance with unilateral exercises that like single leg bridge and and there's many others you you'll you're in the program so um there's ones you can start doing now that aren't going to be too stressful like the front anchors challenge uh that that'll be a great one for you to kind of focus on focus on the side that is weaker or harder to maintain good form with and spend more time working on that side to kind of balance out the two sides of your body so uh, great question, and I'll take a quick look in the chat before I move on to the next one. Uh, El Poquito, thank you. Having two months of your lessons under my belt made the difference for the... Oh, uh, this must be uh, Ed. Uh, glad, glad to have you here live, Ed. Uh, I'm just so happy to hear that, and uh, happy that you're here live to uh, to celebrate your the honoring, the student hub of the week. Uh, Sperry, you're very welcome. And Arsweld, hi, Dr. Ryan, just finished module three, front anchor challenge and had an episode where my low back muscles went into spasm. I assume I was being too aggressive. Should I back off and repeat the module? Um, typically, that's definitely my, my approach. You know, when, when people uh, are doing something where the intensity is too high, um, and it can lead to like the lower back muscles locking up or maybe, you know, you'll you can call that a spasm. Spasm can have different meanings, but I think that's typically what people mean when they say spasm. When those low back muscles lock up, it is a sign from the body and I would back off. But not only redo the module, but you would actually if you experience a setback, you would actually really benefit from just going back through module one, two, and three again. And you don't have to go at the same pace, but when the body experiences a setback, it does tend to go into protection mode. Um, protection mode is the pattern that we're trying to break out of. Uh, you know, hip flexors tighten, and all the muscles that would bring the body into the protective position, like the fetal position, are going to kind of tighten up and try and protect the body for a little while during that setback. And so you need to remind the body of what you're trying to do reopen that pattern and um 
So the mod, you know, the back anchor awareness, front anchor awareness exercises are excellent just to remind the body, gently remind the body what the goal is. And then you can redo module three with the, the knowledge that you've gained, right? You've learned from that experience of where your threshold is. So you turn it way, way, way down. And then if you can tolerate that at the low intensity, then you turn it up one little notch. And then the next day, another little notch and you find where your threshold is again and you work right at that edge and try to push that threshold. Um, So that's the strategy. I I think that the, you know, one of the biggest challenges that students face and that I face uh, with this program is that there is a tendency for people to want to go through the program uh, faster because of Maybe it's the membership style of the program, or maybe it's just that people want to get out of pain faster. I think that's probably the primary reason is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's desirable to get out of pain sooner, right? Uh, but sometimes that can backfire. And that, that's the biggest challenge I have is getting people to just spend more time mastering the early stuff because it really pays off later. You can kind of just cruise through the end of the program, um, even the second and third phase you know the two back two thirds of the program can you can cruise through if you really master phase one so hopefully that helps for the question in the chat and i know there's some more questions but i'm gonna uh i'm gonna kind of intermittently go back and forth between the prepared questions and the chat so next one is from louis or lewis I made good progress with the program, but seem to have a flare up with my quadratus lumborum when I do the bridge. I'm also having ridiculous symptoms, posterior left leg over the L5 S1 dermatome. Okay, let me just think about that for a second. Posterior left leg over the L5 S1 dermatome and that dermatome is pretty low down. It's gonna be, you know, it goes around, wraps around the outside of the leg and then over the top of the foot. We have the dermatomes over here. Yeah. Okay. Just looking at it. Superior lateral insertion, slightly posterior. This 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 is a pretty technical question here. Superior lateral insertion, slightly posterior on my iliac crest is tender to the touch. Okay. All right, so you're talking about the QL insertion. Frustrating. Is there a fix for this in the database or is this a consulting question? All right, so just for anybody watching who's like, what the heck is what are we talking about here? So the QL is a muscle that runs from in the back. My mouse doesn't go over there, but imagine it's over this skeleton from the rib cage to the pelvis, just that distance right there. Rib cage belt to pelvis. It's pretty thick muscle, about the thickness of your forearm here. Um, and uh, so he's talking about the insertion, all right, which is on the on the pelvis, and that's where it gets really tender. So it's really specific. I think that typically, and you say I'm a PTA student, hence the language. Ah, <laughs> should have read that in the beginning. So typically, when there is you know a one-sided thing, and I don't know if it's one-sided because you say you don't specify right or left, but you do use a singular, right? One quadratus lumborum. Then it's a left, right imbalance. And and those are hard. Those are, you know, those are related to things like scoliosis and, and, um, and single sided, uh, radicular symptoms oftentimes. And so that is going to be require a lot of strategy, a lot of reflect, you know, tuning into your body with every exercise, figuring out uh, with every exercise, you got to just figure out what side, you know, unilateral asymmetrical exercise, what side is a little more challenging to hold good form, what side has a little less endurance, what side is a little weaker, and then you just spend more time working on that side and trying to make it so that it is as strong and has as much endurance and is as easy to maintain good form as the other side. And that's, that is the big picture strategy. And you want to get into the specifics. The question is very specific. So you want to get into the specifics. 
Um, you know, you can do a quadratum, labor, quadratus lumborum release. I'll call it QL from now. QL release, you know, have somebody get in there and that can help. And then when you, and then once it's released, you want to train your body, right? You want to train the nervous system to function with the muscle released. And so you want to lightly get into an activity. And if it's, if the bridge is flaring it up, that might not be the best exercise to get into right after you have it released. But if you can do like the back anchor, back anchor progression without it flaring up, then stop there and call that a win and train your body with the muscle released in those. And then you want to gradually work your way up, you know, cause the back anchor progression isn't like, there isn't like a stopping point. You can progress all the way into the bridge. It is a scale. It's a, it's a true progression. And so you keep progressing that a little bit more day by day and, until you can do the bridge without that flaring up. Typically, if, if, if the bridge is causing a flare up, it's typically because people are bridging too high or their pelvis is falling into an anterior tilt during the bridge. So that's typical, but I can't specify for you because I haven't seen you do this. Um, and then you ask really, is this a consulting question? Uh, we do have the coaching hub for students that want a little more, you know, um, personalized coaching. So you could always submit a video of yourself doing the bridge to me in there. And then I, you know, I do my video analysis and, and feedback for you. And that that's typically a really good uh, way to just get feedback on how you can improve your anchor connections. And um, there's almost never a video submitted where I don't find something kind of that that can really be worked on or changed. So uh, yeah, awesome that you're getting into uh, physical therapy as a profession, uh, super rewarding. And uh, yeah, glad to have you in the program, uh, Lewis. All right, so let's go back to the chat real quick. And um, let's see. I don't know exactly where I was. Sue, I have bad SI issues right now and it creates hip flexor pain. I'm excited to see how this CBT helps me. Uh, thank you for sharing, Sue. Yeah, SI issues are typically improved through the programs just to give you hope. Uh, just, you know, the bridge is initially what you want to do and we will progress that for specifically for the SI joint later. And module four specifically has a progression for uh, SI joint stability, but you really want to master the bridge before you get there. Uh, and it, yes, typically hip flexor pain is very associated with uh, this, this monster of muscle imbalances that you might be dealing with. Um, Vinny, uh, back from Barbados. Awesome. Tuned in, storing all the positive, helpful information. You're very welcome. Uh, I see, I guess, message deleted. I don't know what was there. Matt K. Hey, Dr. Ryan, having years of chronic back pain. The CBT program has been life changing for my low back. Uh, I have C and T, spine, stenosis, arthritis, and it tenses up when doing the bridge. Any suggestions? Uh, first of all, uh, you're very welcome, Matt. Uh, glad to have you here and, and, uh, just thank you for sharing, you know, every time somebody shares something like that, that the program helps them, I believe it gives other people hope, you know, as I, I can relate to years of feeling like there was no hope, there was no solution. I tried everything and, you know, the, the key for me was never giving up, but just having that feeling of like, man, I have no idea what's wrong and what to do. Uh, I just love when people share like that. So thank you, Matt. So uh, giving other people inspiration and hope. So to get to your question, cervical and thoracic spine stenosis and arthritis, it tenses up when doing the bridge. <clears throat> the bridge is... The one, the what if there was one bad thing about the bridge, and I think there is, it's not bad, it's just not optimal. So many things about the bridge are like ideal for the body, but the one thing that's not optimal is the head and neck position, the upper thoracic position, because it kind of gets you into a uh, you know, a forward hunched posture. Uh, I'll see if I can just pull up a picture for people and show you what I'm talking about. So when you're, when you're up, when you're on your upper thoracic spine like this, 
you know it's causing a little compression here and if and it's pushing your head forward pushing your neck forward and it's just really it's just not ideal it's not necessarily bad where people sit like this all day long on their phones right so it's not going to be damaging it's just not ideal and it could cause a little flare-up if there is an existing issue such as stenosis so the the kind of fix i have for this for the bridge is uh here's another picture uh no not the, not so great the fix i have for this is one of the progressions in the program is uh Hip, uh, the bridge on the foam roll so i think it's that foam roll i'm actually using in the video or you could even even do the bridge on the on a exercise ball and so that lifts you up off the ground and allows your spine to be in a more neutral position you can actually if you need to support your head you can use your hands behind your head and and support your head that way and so I, if you're in the program and it sounds like you've been in it for a while, you would have already been exposed to that progression, but maybe you forgot about it or maybe it doesn't work for you. Um, if the, if the foam roll, um, Matt, if the foam roll doesn't feel good on your spine, because you're, you, you mentioned you have thoracic spine stenosis and arth arthritis, that might be a lot of pressure. Then you might do better with the exercise ball uh it's a lot softer more surface area it's not going to have too many pressure points on your spine or you can turn your foam roll long ways so it's vertical parallel with your spine and so that'll be you know m not really the type of pressure points that you would have but lifting the spine off the ground allows you know allows for it to be more in alignment it will be more like this and it doesn't cause that hunching that thoracic rounded posture and also um it just it actually allows for some more excursion in your hips and so you could actually get more benefit um in the hips as well so that's my recommendation but uh, ultimately you, you want to uh listen to your body you want to turn down the intensity if you feel pain with anything you turn down the intensity and and find where your threshold is you, it requires you to turn down the intensity and then you gradually turn it up one notch i said this earlier but it it deserves repeating one notch at a time until you find that threshold and then you work right at that edge before the pain and you push that threshold you push your body's tolerance and resilience because that's what ultimately what we, what we want to do we want to be more resilient so we can do more things in life and enjoy it without getting pushed back into pain into a setback um and if bridge just ultimately doesn't feel good then that's that's listening to your body and we can find something else you know there's a lot to choose from in the program and if there's it sounds like the program has helped you if there's something that in there that you feel wow that's really helped a lot then you do more of that and if there's something in the program that feels to you like ah this just doesn't really feel like great for my body then you can cut that out um anything else about you know anything else about c and t spine stenosis and arthritis movement is great for arthritis keep moving and stenosis is going to be more in your cervical spine uh, not typically in the thoracic spine. So if you have cervical stenosis, then the exercise from today's video, from the beginning of the stream, is going to be really beneficial for, uh, you know, the, the module two and three stuff in the program is really good for thoracic mobility and, and sparing the neck, reducing that cervical stenosis so you can get more mobility and use your thoracic spine more so that it takes the pressure and the load off of your neck, that, that, that stenosis. It's the same story as the lower back. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps for you, Matt. Uh, some more in the chat. I see Marina. I accidentally deleted a message uh thank you for moderating marina uh, my our typical moderator Osti, is not here today she's at disneyland so hope, hopefully she's having fun and uh my my lovely wife is um is filling in um matt says having gone through all back pain treatments imaginable in the past 10 years and i cannot thank you enough for sharing your knowledge with us life-changing for sure ah matt this is awesome you know what like appreciate you and your words and uh, feel free to share that on you know like 
trust pilot or something because i think those really powerful words matt uh it can really help change other people's lives you know so uh everybody that that does that and shares is is helping pass it on right you 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 experience something good and you pass it on and and um that's it's a really beautiful thing to see so uh marina uh reposted the message that was deleted i just finished module three three front anchor challenge and had an episode where my low back muscles went into spasm i assume i was being too aggressive oh that i already answered that one right yeah yeah i already answered that one Sue, are you talking about a large exercise ball? I have a really big one and a very rigid foam roll. I haven't gotten to the bridge module yet, so maybe you cover those, these details later. Okay, Sue, so this exercise ball here is a medium-sized one. A large one is going to be harder to do the bridge on, but it's, it's still possible. And uh, so smaller medium is ideal. Large is still possible, but you're just going to be kind of like angled up off the ground uh, instead of like parallel, unless you have extremely long lower legs. You know, if your lower legs are are long, that if they're as tall as the ball, then you can uh, then you'll be parallel. But uh, or you can just deflate that large ball, and that would actually be fine. You can deflate it a little bit. Um, and rigid foam roll, yeah, that's fine. Um, and the bridge module, I mean, that's module one is the bridge module two. Every module has the bridge in it. There's no specific bridge module, but but every module has either a bridge uh, like refinement mo uh, lesson or a progression. So, yeah, I cover the bridge throughout the program. Um, OK, Marina. Yep. And let's. Uh, Joseph. You're asking me to answer an uh, Instagram question. I don't know what question that you are referring to, so maybe you can post it and then I can answer it. And while I'm waiting for that, then you, I will uh, answer a question from the Student Hub. I think we're on question number, I think I already answered this one. Uh, the next one is from Nicole. She says, I have been noticing some great improvement regarding my connection to my core and fantastic postural awareness since starting the program. However, I continue to struggle with what I suspect is psoas tightness from long distance running and biking. Yeah, so I would say <clears throat> biking is, is a big one for psoas tightness. Yeah, definitely dealt with a lot of students, cyclists in particular, uh, but even mountain biking um, is is a thing. But cyclists is just like very repetitive uh, fetal position exercise, right? Uh, it's a tough one because right? I know people love it so much. It feels good to go fast. Um, so causing chronic one-sided hip pain and lower back discomfort. My biggest ongoing issue is pain with sleeping, which wakes me up in the middle of the night, manifesting in my QL with tightness and pain and my low back. I watched your video about sleeping positions and I've tried to change my bed setup to no avail. I've been evaluated for inflammatory conditions, possibly contributing to nighttime back pain, which have been negative, And my lumbar spine showed only ne negligible arthritis. I'm wondering if you have insight about how I can release my psoas effectively and get my QL to be not so tight. I do have to say that the work in module one and two have been somewhat helpful for this and definitely helpful for my back pain during the day. Awesome to hear, but I'm really at a loss for how to get, the root, uh, get to the root of my pain at night. So, Nicole, I'm going to give you the benefit of any doubt that you have tried all the sleeping positions uh, that I recommend at least. And uh, you've upgraded your mattress to like a medium firm. You know, if it's if it's side sleeping, you can actually get away with a soft mattress. If it's sleeping on your back or stomach, then you definitely want to be in the more firm, like medium firm range. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubts there and uh, we'll talk more specifics. So um, the main clue that I have from your question, your message is that I do have to say that the work in module one and two have been somewhat helpful for this. So that's the win right there. 
and it kind of makes my answer easy is because this is a long game and it, what I mean by that is this stuff takes months and if you have been able to gain uh, benefit from doing something then it's time to double down and triple down on that so you don't have to move on from module one and module two and never do it again just because you're on module three right just keep doing that stuff through until you know until the benefits plateau right if you can continue to get benefits so do more of what's working and less of what's hurting so uh, you can't do less sleep i don't recommend that sleep is hurting uh, but you are do you can you're doing some things that are helping a little bit with the sleep. Um, so here are some thoughts on potential causes of why you might be having pain at night. I'm not going to claim that I actually know the answer, but I have experienced this, and it just makes kind of sense to me that sometimes pain at night is not actually from what you're doing at night and in, in the sleeping position that you're in or the bed or the mattress sometimes pain at night is your body processing what you've done during the day and so i'm not sure what you're doing during the day i'm not sure what your job is um, but it seems like your pain has gotten better during the day um, so that's a good thing but maybe your your body is just been more resilient during the day and then at night it just goes oh, and it like it like I don't know just kind of drops its guard and allows any tension that it was that you were holding off during the day because you've been improving things during the day to come in and do some healing and processing and and maybe that it's possible that that's what's happening because you know if you change your sleeping position you change your mattress you do all the different things and the, and nothing changes about your night pain that that just leads me to believe that it's not your sleeping position that's causing the pain it's not your mattress that's causing the pain it's something else and there is something to be said about uh you i think you mentioned that you've looked into inflammatory conditions so you have done the important thing which is uh go rule out any kind of physiological you know pathological causes uh because it's possible you know un you know one of the things that they teach in pt school is to refer out if someone is experiencing unrelenting night pain or unrelenting pain at all it doesn't change uh depending on what you're doing or or something um, and the night pain is, is one of the things. So you've gone and done that. And I would be confident in your doctors, you know, hopefully you're, you're, you've have confidence in your doctors that you have ruled, ruled that out. And maybe it's possible that, uh, what I was saying earlier is happening and, and it's just going to require some patience from you, Nicole, to, uh, keep doing what you're doing, keep making progress and, uh, believe that your body has more. Uh, room to continue to improve, uh, improve your form, improve your core connection, improve the way that you use your body during the day and um, make sure you take rests during the day so that at night is not the only time your body can let down its guard. Uh, it's possible you're doing a lot during the day and, and uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. These are all speculations, but um, Try, try getting a nap in or try getting a, like just a rest period in during the day and see if that may, changes anything at night. Uh, okay, looking into the chat. Um, so yeah, Joseph, just wondering if you are still here. You, I don't know what Instagram. Uh, Ryan, can you answer in my IG? I just don't know what you're referring to here. And our normal moderator, Asti, who might know what you're talking about, is not here today. So if you're still here, post in the chat what you mean by that. And I'll keep moving on. Arsweld, no worries, Marina. Awesome. Benjamin, chat isn't working. Well, it is because I see that you posted that. So it's working for me. Uh, Matt K, you nailed it. I'm in module six of the program, but forgot about the bridge with the exercise ball that you previously demonstrated. Thanks so much for taking such time with my question. 
Uh, awesome. I'm happy to hear that I uh, answered the question in a way that could be helpful. Uh, I never really know that unless I hear feedback. Sherry, hello, core member Sherry. Uh, good to see you here. How do we access Trustpilot to share our feedback on your program? Well, I think you can go to Google and just search core balance training reviews, or you can just uh, search core balance training Trustpilot on Google. Uh, that's awesome that uh, you're thinking about sharing on there. That uh, means a lot to us. It really is meaningful to, to me and, and the rest of the company. So thank you. And, um, you know, if, if that fails, if searching Google fails, you can just go to, uh, I think the, the link might be core balance training. Let's see, trustpilot.com slash core balance. But don't quote me on that. Something like that. Uh, all right. So, yeah, thanks again, Sherry. Sue, okay, thanks. Oh, you're only on day four. All right. Day four is the first introduction to the bridge, Sue. So you are right on time. Tyler Merkel, just jumping into module two and walking more to break up my days. What is the proper positioning of the anchors and ab flute? Uh, I think you mean glute function at this point. What is the proper positioning of the anchors and ab glute function at this point? Uh, I don't really un understand what you mean by at this point. So at, you know, if you're walking, we're going to get there, Tyler. So that's going to be, um, that's going to be module six, actually. So you're going to have to be patient, but as early as module five, you'll be putting the anchors together into what's called the anchor triad. And that, a lot, that kind of, exposes you it takes a while to really grasp this but exposes you how the anchors work together in standing and then module six is walking and it's called walking week and we spend the whole week doing different walking things so how do they work together it's that's a long answer and it, yeah it kind of requires a whole video on like okay how you know this is what you do when you're engaging all three anchors at the same time. It's kind of one single movement. Um, but, you know, if you're following the modules, I, I just recommend if it, the one of the best things you can do, Tyler, and any other student is go back and watch the early videos multiple times because you I, I really believe you pick up new things each time you watch it seems like really simple and I'm like I'm not doing much, but there's so many subtleties in the video that you may not have been ready to learn the first time around. And then you get down on the floor and you do it. And then you watch the video again and then you go, Oh, that's what he meant by that. Cause I was doing it. And I, you know, now I know what, how to incorporate that little cue, that little hint he gave. So th that's the tip there. Uh, just, you know, go watch the videos again. And, and that you, if you are doing that, then you are doing the proper positioning at the point that you are in the program. And it really is a sequentially designed program for a reason. Uh, I do not want people skipping ahead or learning things that they, that are beyond the foundational stuff, uh, that you got to learn first. So really quick uh gonna go back to the slides not really quick i'm gonna give a full you know genuine answer to a question in the slides and then i'll go back to the to the chat so catherine says i have a whole body vibration machine and it feels really good on my aching sciatica legs to relax my lower calves on the platform so it sounds like a pl like a a plate you you have one of those plates um while it jiggles for three minutes or so. I'm walking a block or two every day, but aside from that I'm, and my mini bridges, I do not get much exercise these days. The vibration machine feels like it stimulates things in a good way. I'm wondering if Dr. Ryan would agree. So, ah, man, I don't like that I'm gonna answer this way, but my personal belief about vibration is it's it's typically not ideal for disc um, dysfunction. Now, that's a huge umbrella term for disc degeneration, disc hernia, disc bulge, you know, uh, 
any kind of disc pathology, I just don't think that vibration is going to be good for it because disc, path disc pathology is a result of excessive amounts of friction or just not congruent. The joints aren't congruent. And so the discs, you know, uh, and that's from posture. So the discs are breaking down in some way or the other. Uh, and, and so vibration would just add to that, uh, to the, to the friction or, or whatever it is. And, and so, yeah, vibration isn't inherently bad. It wouldn't be bad for somebody who ha who's in good posture, but if you're having a, a nerve that's being compressed, uh, you know, potentially by a vertebrae or a disc, then, um, vibrating the, the anatomy around that nerve could irritate it more. However, you're reporting the opposite, that it actually helps. And the vibration might be helping relax your muscles on the surface that helps take the pressure off the nerve. And that could make sense to me. It's just not typically what I find. Um, and, and so for you, Catherine, because, you know, it seems like it feels good for you. I, I wouldn't say stop doing it. I would say listen to your body and, and if it feels good, do it. But also be aware that nerves have a, can have a very delayed response. Uh, if you're finding that like an hour or two after you do this, that your sciatica starts coming on uh, more than normal, then that may be, you know, you know, it could be 10 minutes, it could be an hour, whatever, that may be a delayed nerve response. And, and then the vibration may have blocked the pain kind of like uh, tens, a tens machine, you know, uh, electric nerve stimulation, that is effective for blocking pain, it has a, a short duration of like, you know, two to six hours of blocking pain, but then the pain comes back. So maybe that could be what's happening is it's scrambling the signal of your nerves that vibration and then um if it is coming back then it may not it just may not be a, a long-term thing um so that's for you to decide i'm not going to say stop doing it um i'm just gonna what i will say is it's not going to be the solution for you uh it can be a component of your healing journey um, but ultimately you you would want to wean yourself off of that unless uh, you know, you get to the point where you're feeling good in your body and, and you, you do it because you like it. Uh, that's fine. But it, it's not something you should lean on as a crutch to be out of pain. So hopefully that answers your cat, uh, question, Catherine. We'll take a look in the chat. Uh, we've got one from Guillermo. Hello. Good to see you. Core member showing up. And uh, Aaron Carr, question about the membership. When the three months from date of purchase is reached, do we lose access to the modules videos information? Uh, yes, that is the case, Aaron. However, um, it, uh, is it, it is a subscription. So it automatically renews unless you cancel. So uh, we try to keep the price as low as, as possible. Uh, and um, so 197 is about half the price of a typical, you know, uh, course, online course. And so you can just renew if you need more time or if money is an issue, then reach out to our team and we'll see what we can do for you. But yeah, t I, I would suggest that uh, you don't let the membership timing pressure you to want to move through the program faster because that's not beneficial. I think what's most beneficial is just going at your pace and not paying attention to that. And if three months comes up and you're only in module four, uh, I honor that. And assuming you've been staying committed on a regular basis, you've been working on the things, the foundations, and um, and it's not like a requirement that you need to get through the, pro the whole program to, be to have benefit from the program. And it's not a requirement that you need to do that in three months. Some people take six months. Uh, you know, for when I was kind of experimenting on my body with this stuff, you know, a long time ago, I probably spent the equivalent of five or six months just on weeks one and two. 
you know, I hadn't, I didn't have it laid out for me, but I, uh, I got benefit for that amount of time just on the first two modules. So, uh, hopefully that kind of clears it up for you. Uh, Kawaii, Aloha. I'm now a module five anchor triad, having a hard time getting a straight line, like in your triad photos, tight hip flexors, upper body still seems to be forward is my goal. Shoulders over hips. I wouldn't focus too much Kawaii on looking in the mirror and shoulders over hips. I would focus on what you feel. So you want to feel that current connection between your pubic bone and your rib cage in the front. You want to feel like you are connecting a little bit uh, in the back with your back anchor. The back it's more subtle in standing. The back anchor is more subtle. It's not gonna you're not your rib cage isn't gonna really come down, you know, the way it is when you're in in the awareness position on the floor. Uh, it's, it's really not gonna move that much, but just a gentle push away from the back anchor and and just feeling like you can close your eyes and do this and feel the connection rib cage to pubic bone while you're in standing and it's all very subtle and it takes a long time to wrap your body in mind around this this connection at first uh, give yourself some time and, and um, p just be patient that if you keep practicing you know, a few times a day, it doesn't take any time, right? It, uh, you could do it for one minute, uh, at, you know, standing in line at the grocery store, right? Um, do it a few times a day and stick with it for a week or two that you will make progress each time. And, and maybe one day you'll have a breakthrough and be like, ah, oh, that's the connection. I can stand. I feel the connection in my core. My posture feels good. And it's really about the feeling rather than the you know the straight line that you would see in a mirror or or a side shot yeah that is a factor but uh i think that that would be um, the the visual cue from a mirror is a little bit of a crutch because then you take the mirror away and you go to your normal life then you have not actually learned the feeling which is much more important to be able to have you can take that with you and you can't take the mirror with you so uh that's my advice um and uh i hope that that makes sense that it's more important than what it looks like in the beginning and then you get that feeling you can check in the mirror and be like, all right yeah my posture is a little better um you know and that and every and there's so many different body types too so so that's another factor why i say the mirror is not uh, is not the goal. Okay. Next one from Sherry. Thanks, Marina. All right, cool. Um, yes, Sherry, uh, we love you. Thank you so much for just being so supportive of, of core balance training, this little company that we have and this little family that, uh, you know, we, we appreciate the community that we have around us. It means a lot. Uh, Tyler Merkel, you're very welcome. Kimberly, new here, not in the program, just started a solo skincare practice and really having bad lower back pain is severe in the coccyx area. Just can't get comfortable giving facials. Any advice? Thank you. In the coccyx area, I don't have any specific advice in the coccyx because there can be so many causes. Uh, I'm actually going to be having, so Kimberly, you might want to tune in when I have a pelvic health specialist as a guest, uh, a local physical therapist in the Santa Barbara region, uh, excellent um, in pelvic floor, pelvic health. Uh, she's a specialist. So I'm going to have her on as a guest soon. And you might want to keep an eye out for when that happens. And, we, and you can ask her directly. Um, this is not my specialty. The coccyx is not my specialty. Uh, but lower back pain is, and you're not in the program. And I think that there is a huge relationship between the lower back and the pelvis and the pelvis is, you know, contains the coccyx. So do, do the free trial, Kimberly is, is free. And I believe that you will get a good clue into, uh, if it can help you. And I, I love the fact that you're going out there and starting your own practice and wouldn't wouldn't want something like this to hold you back from 
um, being able to be our best with that. So uh, give it a try. It's free and you can cancel, you know, right away if if you're afraid uh you know you don't want to forget about it or don't want to get charged but just that first week can make a big difference and I, th I think that has been the case for a lot of people um okay joe from joseph so this is the instagram post from joseph thank you for searching that out marina so you say uh i am from israel i'm 18 years old in israel when you get to 18 you go to the army for service for three years so i need and want to go one day I went to the orthopedic and he told me I have an L5S1 spondy and he told me I cannot go to the army and run with it. Wanted to ask you, what can I do? What this problem, what does it mean? How can I run? I saw so many doctors and videos and I understand nothing. Would love to be grateful for your honest opinion and answer. Thank you. Okay, Joseph, if you're still here, I would like to direct you to a video I've done specifically on spondylolisthesis. L5S1, I demonstrate exactly what is happening with a L5S1 spondylolisthesis. And I also talk about how you can run again with a spondy. You can walk and you can run. And the reason that the ortho in Israel is telling you you can't join the army is because they are so used to something like this le leading to a spiral that eventually leads to disability and surgery and problems that people in the army cannot have. Uh, but that's not the case anymore. There are options out there. And I believe that what is taught in the core balance training program, this new core connection, this new relationship with your body can allow you to uh, improve your posture, to walk without pain, to run without pain, and um, would allow you to get back in the army. But you're just going to have to go do it yourself. Take responsibility, which you're doing. So I'm proud of you for that. Fix the problem. Then go back to your ortho and say, hey, see, look what I did. Check my body now. And I don't have pain anymore. And now I would like to join the army. And uh, that would be the ideal scenario. Uh, and I believe that's possible for you. So hopefully that gives you hope. Check out the video. I, I don't remember the name of the video. It's probably something to do with walking and uh, stenosis. So just go to the Core Balance Training YouTube channel and search walking and stenosis, walking stenosis, and you'll see a video. And I talk about spondylolisthesis in that video. So hopefully you watch that and hopefully that helps uh matt k thanks for all you do uh thank you matt i really appreciate it ah just posted in trust thank you so much matt appreciate you appreciate uh sherry appreciate just the love that uh we are receiving from people that are taking responsibility and and improving their lives you know it's you guys are the ones doing the work i'm just over here on the other side of the camera and uh it's the work like I say, the program is only half the solution and the other half is that you do it. And so it's the work that really gets it done. And I'm proud of you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. And you can always catch the replay, Matt. So if you can't make it live uh, yeah, and you say catch some good waves, I live in Santa Barbara. So unfortunately, uh, I have to wait for certain times of year to do that. But wherever you are, I hope you catch some good waves. Um, Kawaii, you're very welcome. And Jan, you have Parkinson's, stooped posture, worse when you walk. Is there something that can be corrected? Jan, have you heard of, uh, it's called BIG. I can't remember the acronym. It's, uh, it's really effective for Parkinson's. Parkinson's, the things that are effective are loud. Yeah, BIG and loud. If you search that, search Parkinson's BIG or Parkinson's loud. Uh, these are organizations that help people to halt the progression of Parkinson's uh, through large amplitude movements and large amplitude speaking and yelling. And that's what gradually decreases is the amplitude of your movement. And so you, you want to take big steps and you want to you want to talk loud. And these are classes and trainings on on doing that like group classes or you can get personal training on that 
So that's what I recommend. Uh, also, reciprocal movements are really good for Parkinson's. And uh, posture can be affected through um, stuff like what's in the program, right? So uh, that that's an example, but there are lots of things that you can do to improve your posture. For example, uh, the beginning of the video today is it helps with stooped posture. So uh, it gets worse when you walk, and that's probably because of endurance. Your muscles get tired when you walk, and they have a harder and harder time holding you up the longer you go. So you can build up endurance as well. You know, with Parkinson's, it's going to be harder. It's going to take more work, but it's not impossible. And I would definitely, it's called like LVST or LSVT. I think LSVT. I'm going to type this LSVT. I don't know if that's right. Big. Oh, I, I might have those acronyms wrong. LSVT or uh, loud. And you can even watch some YouTube videos on it. And it's pretty awesome. The changes. I wish more people with Parkinson's would were aware that these this treatment exists. Uh, I think it's really effective. So let's take a look at the last question from this, the student hub from Steven. I tweaked my back while doing the bird, uh, the bride bridge probably and trying to keep my pelvic position tilted up. Not sure what to do and I'm in pain. Please advise. Okay, Steven. So what do you mean by trying to keep my pelvic position tilted up because there have been in the past students who thought that they were supposed to arch their pelvis up, which would be an anterior pelvic tilt, which would be like arching the lower back to tilt the pelvis up. But uh, it just requires a little clarity on what I mean by pelvic position. I, I don't usually use tilted up. I usually use tilted back. So I will type that. Tilted back is what we want with the pelvis. And this would be a posterior pelvic tilt. The pubic bone would come up. And when, so when the, when, uh, let's see, when you tilt your pelvis back, pubic bone comes up. That's what you want up. And so hopefully that is what you're doing or maybe if maybe hopefully it's not what you're doing because if you were doing it wrong then we have an easy correction that can help you to be able to do the bridge without tweaking your back by doing it this way. So pubic bone comes back the top of the pelvis actually uh top of pelvis uh, comes back. Okay, that's why the pelvis is tilted back. The top is tilted back. The bottom of the pelvis tilts up, pubic bone. Um, so if you were doing it wrong, then awesome. We have an easy correction. If you were already doing it this way and you were doing it right and you tweaked your back, then turn down the intensity. Uh, see... Uh, how it goes with just doing the back anchor awareness and the progression. If you can do that without tweaking your back, then gradually come up into the bridge a little more. Maybe, maybe it'll take you a full week to get back to the full bridge. Just come up a little bit more at a time and find where your threshold is. How, how far can you go up into the bridge without tweaking your back? You don't want to cross that threshold into the pain. And you want to gradually work right underneath that threshold. And what you are accomplishing by doing that each session is pushing that threshold a tiny bit further. There's a 10% crossover in range of motion. So if you go to, say, 45 degrees, for example, this is an arbitrary number, 45 degrees up, you actually get benefits within a 10 degree range. So it, it actually benefits, benefits from you from 40 degrees to 50 degrees. Your body benefits. So you can actually push your threshold by going right underneath it by at least, you know, a couple, it, it re extends further uh, than, than the amount that you go up. So uh, turning down the intensity is just my always going to be the best thing that you can do, Stephen, and listening to your body. So if, you know, if even doing the bridge at a 5% intensity of what you were doing before still tweaks your back, then your body's not ready for it at this time for whatever reason. Maybe there's a disc 
bulge that's in the position where that motion is pushing it onto a nerve at this time, then that's maybe the case. Oh, I'm not saying that is as one one in a million, um, you know, scenarios that it could be, but there are scenarios where maybe it's not the right time and you got to find the thing that you can do. Um, and so that's the advice that I can give um, is how are you doing the bridge and is your body ready for it right now? And if not, then do the other things to that your body can tolerate that feel good. And then we'll gradually work towards being able to do the bridge over time as it gets ready. So uh, hopefully that helps for you, Stephen. And that was the last question of the day. And I think I'm caught up in the chat. So it looks like this is the end of the stream. Wow, I went for over an hour. I'm shocked. I never think I'm going to go that long, but here we are. If you're still here, congratulations on making it through. Thank you for being here. Uh, feel free. If you found anything useful, uh, feel free to support the stream, support our channel by hitting that like button, uh, sharing the link with your friends. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we appreciate you. And I see Joseph is did post in the chat. It just says, thank you for answering uh, yeah, you're very welcome, Joseph. So um, thank you guys all for being here. I'm signing off. Until next week, uh, get down on the floor and connect to your core. All right, take care, everyone.